Welcome back. Once again, you're watching Ozarks Tonight. Good to have you along. I'm David Oliver. We're going to talk tonight about a new effort by the city of Springfield to get all of us to be more aware at pedestrian crosswalks around the city. Be honest. Do you look at them? Do you stop when they ask you to stop? Well, we're joined tonight by a public works traffic engineer with the city of Springfield, Mandy Bootkin. Good to see you, Mandy. Thanks for coming in. Good to see you. Talk about, first of all, what we're seeing. I know you guys recently did a crosswalk compliance study. Mm -hmm. and it reveals that Springfieldians are not stopping at crosswalks, correct? Not so much, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, talk about that study. So we're finding that about only one in four drivers will stop for a pedestrian that is standing at the edge of the road waiting to cross, and uh, most drivers don't realize that they're supposed to stop for pedestrians by law, whether they're in the crosswalk or still waiting at the ramp. And I know the study looked at the last quarter, and it looked at certain crosswalks here mm -hmm. in Springfield, and you found a compliance rate of about 25%, is that correct? That's right, yeah. And that's concerning, obviously, right? That is very concerning. Obviously, there are some locations where people are more used to pedestrians, and so more drivers stop for pedestrian there. Mm -hmm. But then there's also a lot of locations in Springfield where the crosswalk is well marked, and yet a lot of people don't stop, sometimes as little as 8% of folks that will stop. You gave me some information from that uh, first quarter of 2019 uh, survey, the study, if you will. Uh, commercial Street near Boonville, 69% compliance right there. Yes. Uh, Grant and Talmadge, 11 percent. Bennett, Delaware, 23 percent. Then we get down to like Grant and Madison. We had a 9 percent compliance rate with people stopping at the crosswalks there. Ingram Mill at Seneca, 8 percent. Mm -hmm. Those are pretty alarming, alarmingly low numbers. Yes. yes, they are. And so what we're doing is that we now publish our numbers. Mm -hmm. We have two compliance signs in town that are really big at the intersection Campbell and Walnut Lawn and Glenstone and Division and those signs show the drivers every month how they're doing. Right now it says 25% of drivers are yielding and then hopefully as we go on three qu every quarter that uh, those numbers will hopefully increase. You have an example of that sign right I there. I do. Don't you you this can show is... our viewers. You're going to see this perhaps as you drive around Springfield and this shows 23% of drivers yielded to a pedestrian and that's based on that, stir that, that study, right? This is based on the study. This would be the particular location of Bennett Street okay. at Delaware and that way the people that live there or drive all the time will know, oh, there was a study right here in my neighborhood, and maybe it'll help people to remember next time they drive So by. those people at Ingram Mill and Seneca are going to see one of those that says 8%, yep. Grant and Madison's going to see one that says 9%, but those at Commercial and Boonville are going to see the sign that shows 69%, That's so they're correct. going to be happy with that, yeah, obviously. Yeah, exactly. How can we get people to pay more attention? What are you all doing to try to get us to stop at these crosswalks, as we should by law? Well, f first of all, it's important that, that people train themselves to see that bright yellow sign. You can't miss it. It's the same color as our Mr. Walker that is standing around town. And uh, once you see that, it's important to start slowing down if you're not going the speed limit or have other break, look for pedestrians, and if you see one, just gradually slow down, and that's also how you avoid rear end crashes. You told me as well you all got a, a grant from MoDOT to do a, kind of a public education campaign in the schools. Yes. We're going to show some pictures of that. Tell me what that in, entails. So basically, we're going into the classes first, second, and third, and we're educating them about traffic safety, how to cross streets safely, what to look for, um, whether or not certain things mean they're safe, like a crosswalk doesn't necessarily make it safe. Mm -hmm. A traffic signal that says go doesn't necessarily make it safe, but we teach the kids to take responsibility for their own safety and look around, learn where to look for vehicles and how to proceed safely. And Basically to become their own safety superheroes. Tell me about the little capes they're wearing, the yellow capes, right? That's yes, the superhero Yes, the thing. kids love them. So we give, after the session, we give out these bright yellow capes that say stop, think, observe, proceed, which is the steps that follow before they step into the street to make sure they're safe and that's how the superhero theme ties together with traffic safety. I have to assume that part of your uh, maybe uh, method of operation with this is if you get to the kids now and educate them perhaps then when they're older they'll be more responsible drivers, right? That is correct. That's a thought. We play little games that teach them to look for motorcyclists for example and for bicyclists and pedestrians so when they grow up and drive that they'll be a lot more aware of those things. I asked you before we went on the air as well that you all conduct the these crosswalk compliance studies pretty frequently and you change the locations, correct? Mm -hmm, we do, yeah. And you, But you find typically that we're usually 
usually around the 23 to 25 percent compliance rate on an average. Isn't that correct? On an average, that's where I've been at. So, but we hope as we uh, move on and educate more, that that percentage is slowly going to crawl up. Okay. For viewers that are watching us right now and they're thinking, "Oh, I got to be better about stopping at the crosswalks," what would be your your advice and, and the takeaway that people should should get from from what we're talking about here? My advice would be to watch for those bright yellow pedestrian crossing signs. They're very well marked, and then make sure you drive the speed limit that you have optimal time to to stop and uh, just look for pedestrians and mm. then uh, it's not just the nice thing to do it's it's the law so we want law. we want to make sure that that people know that and we want to make sure lives are protected too That's obviously true, yeah. all right Mandy Bootkin with the public works department a traffic engineer with city of Springfield thank you for coming in thank you for educating people about this and bringing this to our attention too yeah you're okay. welcome thank you we will have more Ozarks tonight after this quick break